Here Pack is asking subscribers asking questions to celebrate having over 1,500 subscribers. Who the hell is he? And what kind of name is that? That's not his real name. He's the guy who makes YouTube videos about Bible stories using little play school dolls. Are you sure they're play school? No, but I tried looking them up on Google Images and got bored looking at thousands of molded plastic toys, so I quit. Maybe they're weebles. No, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Remember all the dolls in your Bible on psychotherapy who are lying down, sometimes even on psychiatrist couches? So this guy plays with dolls and posts videos of this on YouTube? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Are you transphobic or just sexist? Caught in a gender binary, perhaps? Lots of men play with dolls. Just look at Jason and Opinionville. Or, for more historical citation, look at Geppetto. Everybody forgets about Geppetto because the Disney PR department co-opted the story and placed emphasis on Pinocchio instead. Seriously, where would Pinocchio be without Geppetto? In a forest infested with Dutch elm disease? Precisely. But puppets aren't dolls. Why? Because men play with them? And until Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop, most puppeteers were seen as male? Don't forget Kukla Fran and Ollie, which first appeared on television in 1947. Did you know that show was entirely ad-libbed and watched by more adults than children? People watched television in 1947? Not many, no. Watch your television. Go away. Go away. Go away. Yes, but Fran was just another character on the show. She wasn't the puppeteer. That was a man named Burr Tilstrom. Or is it because puppets have mobility and voices and most other dolls don't? Don't you see? It's way past time for the liberation of anthropomorphic toys. We've been relegated to silence and stillness long enough. And why? Because girls play with us. And girls aren't supposed to be active or have a voice. The colonization of dolls by male-dominated puppetarchy. This is getting rather tangential. What does Bob's mere fact want us to ask? Oh, right. Okay, we can ask him anything we want, and he wants to know our favorite books and movies. I hate when people ask my favorite. I'm an eclectic person. My tastes and interests change far too often to confine myself to such a narrow self-definition. You're really an elitist jerk, aren't you? This is not an occasion for a flame war, you two. Let's just think of something to say, okay? I'm sorry, but the whole Inquisition, Dark Ages, Burning Times thing has left me a bit squeamish about publicly stating a strong opinion on social issues, especially in today's climate. Completely understandable. My apologies. Okay, so we won't do a favorite book or movie, but does anybody have any suggestions for a really good one? I'll go with The Handmaid's Tale. I think it's completely relevant today with the resurgence of misogynistic theocratic fundamentalism invading U.S. politics and rippling into global policies. Yeah, that was a great book, but the movie just stank. I wish people still read. Everybody should read that. Okay, then. Is there a movie that is up to snuff with the book it's based on? Oh, I've got a good one, but it's controversial. It doesn't sound to me like this Bob's mere fact dude is going to tie you up and torture you for having an opinion. Hey, I resent that remark. Can we leave my lifestyle choices out of this discussion? Sorry, you're right. But I would like to hear her suggestion, and there is an historical precedent for her unwillingness to speak out. Okay, I can speak for myself here. I think we should suggest Silence of the Lambs. What? What? It's so pathological. And the whole transphobic angle. Buffalo Bill is portrayed as a trans person whose sociopathy is based on his non-binary gender status. That's explained both in the book and the film. I think that's one reason why Hannibal Lecter is a psychiatrist. He explains that Buffalo Bill isn't really a trans person, but takes on female identities and skins simply because he hates himself and wants to be anybody other than him. A discerning reader and viewer would understand this. Yeah, and most moviegoers are discerning, right? Other people's willful ignorance is not our problem, so long as we present our own arguments clearly and factually. I think we should suggest this because it's a terribly clever book. The writing, the wordplay, 
the anagrams, the serious treatment of Agent Starling's struggle with old boy sexism within the institutions of the FBI, the compassion for low-income victims. It's insightful. It's a page-turner. And the movie treatment, although necessarily abbreviated due to time constraints of a two-hour film, is so true to the author's original intent. So unlike the color purple in which Steven Spielberg treats low-income rural black pansexuals like E.T.'s and Alice Walker lets him. That was a very popular movie, you know, among African-American women, and it became a musical on Broadway. Musicals on Broadway are tourist attractions for the affluent. Exactly. So you want to go with Silence of the Lambs? The editing, the sets, the locations, the directing, the acting, the lighting, the score. It's one of the creepiest and most thought-provoking films to come out of mainstream Hollywood. It could almost be Asian horror. It's so good. Well, let's not get carried away, shall we? If we go with Asian horror, I'd vote for the Korean film Memento Mori, the struggles of two adolescent schoolgirls in love, the best film of the Whispering Corridor horror series. It's hard to believe it was written and directed by a man. Talk about school score, lighting, sets, directing and stuff. Well, I agree, but most Americans are too caught up in the pablum of their corporate controlled popular culture to understand the reference to Memento Mori. Besides, there's no book it's based on, and I think we're trying to consolidate for brevity, aren't we? And see how well that's going? Yes, let's go with Silence of the Lambs. I doubt Hollywood will ever produce anything of that caliber again. That's the film in which I fell in love with both Tony Hopkins and Jodie Foster at the same time. We know. Because Hopkins is so virile, understated, and sympathetic. And Foster is resourceful, insightful, determined, and butch. Both characters fell outside the gender stereotypes of the day, and your heart just melted at the understated queerness of it all. A girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. Now, what question do we want to ask Bob Smearfact for his channel party? The script is almost two pages long already. We either need brevity or surrender. I agree. I have a very simple, boring question. Shoot. Does he actually have kids and, therefore, toys lying around? Or was this a compelling personal commitment to atheist videos that drove him to dolls? Here we go again. Nah, I get what she's saying. And it's a good question. A lot of atheists, secular humanists, and free thinkers might not have considered using toys for fear of ridicule or not being taken seriously. It took some gonads for him to go with the toys angle. Okay, that settles it. Let's wrap this puppy up. Rogie needs to take a bath, eat breakfast at 11 o'clock in the morning, find a camera, and go to work. And this script just lopped over onto page three. Deal? Deal. Wait, we need to thank Bob Smearfact for the shout-out. He shouted us out? Well, not us, exactly. We're brand new characters on Rogie's channel. Nobody's ever even heard of us. She's been thinking about it for a long time, influenced in part by Bob Smearfact himself, but was afraid it would be too much work. And now she's not? Oh, no, she's still worried about the too much work thing, not to mention the no fancy editing software thing, and the fact her cheap video camera can't focus to save its own life. But she's doing it anyway. Yeah, in honor of Bob Smearfact, she thought it was only right. Thank you for the shout-out, Bob Smearfact. You'll be sorry. Thank, Thank you, you for, for the, the shout-out, shout out, Bob, Bob Smearfact. Smearfact. You'll be sorry. You'll be sorry. Yeah, he kind of created a monster here, didn't he? Oh, shut up.